Alrighty guys, so welcome to this next little video part segment thing. Um, yeah, so the last video I uploaded, which I did a very, very quick hasty job of it because I was so dead tired, um, talked about how, yes, you could actually overclock on the Huanager X58 um, Deluxe, but now I'm going to upload this video and say why should you and why you shouldn't um the thing is you've got to remember with these chinese motherboards is that they have a very very lackluster power phase delivery system they only have a six plus three power phase delivery now that what was it plus two for the north bridge and a plus one for the um pci lanes or a plus one for the was it SATA lanes? I don't remember exactly, but I know it's a six phase power delivery system just for the CPU. And the thing is, it does not hold up well for overclocking. Yes, you can, but um, in my last video, I talked about how I had the CPU at a stable three point, I think I said 3.8 or 3.9. That is not the case. Um, after doing more testing and more stress testing and gaming for a long period of time, I discovered that at 3.8 it still crashed, or at multiplier 29 and 28 they both still crashed. To maintain a stable uh, current clock speed, I've had to set my core multipliers up to 27, which gives me a cool 3.59 gigahertz overclock on my system. And that has maintained a stable, a very stable run. It has not crashed to me yet, um, knock on wood. But yet again, I still would not recommend overclocking on this board. Um, to put it into perspective, if you were to pick up the X fifty six eighty seven, sorry, I couldn't think of the name for a second there. The X5677 or the X5687, they would both be a good, stable, base clock CPU. Um, both of those are also tooled for running at those frequencies, Well, something like the W3570, which is what I'm currently using, is not. It's designed to be overclocked, that's why it has the uh, unlocked multiplier. But... That does not change the fact that this board was designed for office use. Right there on their advertisements, it talks about being used for an a, uh, office or a professional level use. It was not designed for overclocking and for gaming, even though it does have active cooling on the North Bridge and um, uh, active cooling technically on its VRMs too because it is connected by a heat pipe. But yet again, that doesn't really that doesn't really change the fact that its lackluster power delivery system is it's underwhelming to put it bluntly now granted the x50 or the w3570 which i'm currently using in the system is a first gen x58 or i guess it's on the larger uh, processor node for x58. From my understanding, there has been two generations, being the x55 series, and then the x56 series, and then the w35 series, and then the w36 series. Um, being that the 36s and 56s are both built on a smaller processing node, meaning that they run more efficiently and they run with a lower power draw. So, there's a possibility that the system will run more stably with a W3680 or a W3690, which are the two overclockable variations of the 36 series. But I don't know. I haven't tested it yet personally. I do plan on testing it sometime in the future. But as of right now, it just running with the W3570, it, it runs all right at 3.6 gigahertz or 3.59 gigahertz, which is exactly what the X5687 uh, would be running at, and it would be running it more efficiently. 
so take that into or take that into consideration when deciding if you actually want to go with an overclockable CPU. I still stand by my X5677 is the best value, and the X5687 is probably going to be your best performance. Granted, those are both 4-core, 8-threaded CPUs. But 4-core, 8-threaded CPUs are not bad for the money, especially when you take into the account um, just how how much power that they can actually output. For many, many, many years, Intel only had 4-core, 8-threaded i7s. And the, what is it, the uh, X5677 is right on par with the second gen i7, and the X5687 exceeds second gen and third gen i7s to the point where it's actually knocking on fourth gen i7 territory. Not quite, quite to that level, but very, very close to it. So, take that into consideration yet again when looking at processors. And the value for money, the W36, uh, set, or W3680 and W3690 are both like forty and fifty dollar processors. So they're not in in the grand scheme of things, they're not insanely expensive. But for this platform, I think they're too much. Which is the same thing about the X5680 um, and X5690, and those two are non-overclockable, but yet again, they still are too expensive when looking at this platform. Simply for the fact that this platform is older, and if you're going to be buying a motherboard from AliExpress, you may as well just pick up a, um, was it Plex HD Turbo? which is the X79 variation, which that board in many aspects is just superior than what an X58 system would be. So, there's a lot of things to weigh out when looking at this kind of, this kind of a system, and I just have a hard time recommending spending more money than what you should, or spending more money than what I think you should on this kind of a platform. And, I mean, to each their own. I know for a fact that I love the X58 platform. I have an EVGA X58 SLI LE, which is Pink Nova. I've got just a standard SLI, which I just have sitting in reserve for if this motherboard decides to die on me, I have something that I can replace it with right away. Um, I have the Joker PC, which is a... Dell Precision T3500, which is built on the X58 platform with a genuine X58 chipset. Um, so as you can tell, I have an affinity for this platform. But that doesn't change the fact that I don't think it's worth spending an arm and a leg getting onto this platform. Which, and yet again, I say this, take it as you will and make your own decisions. But I would not get this board for overclocking. I would not get this board if I was planning on having a PC last me 10 years because I don't know the longevity of these Chinese systems. I don't have a problem with this motherboard. In fact, I quite enjoy it. I think it's really fun to mess around with and it's really fun to test the limits of and I fully plan on testing the limits of this thing. But I don't expect it to last more than two, maybe three years at max. But granted, that kind of goes with a lot of these Chinese motherboards. You don't know the longevity. You don't know the actual build quality. You don't know how long they're going to last. Because they are built out of cheaper components. That's very much a known fact. So... Put that into your uh, put that into your mind if you're going to be considering something like this. And if you're watching this video, you probably already own this motherboard, or you're probably heavily considering it. So, let me leave you with one final thought. Is this something that you want to get, or something that you feel like you need to get? Because if you feel like the X79 platform is too expensive, going with an X5677, 12 gigs of RAM. 
and something like a GTX 750 Ti 760 would make a pretty decent low budget gaming PC but going to the extremes like what I have is not really a great idea and if you do want to push the budget push the PC push something to where you can get something bigger and better I think going for something like x79 or even better the x99 platform is the way to go um and one more thing that I don't think a lot of people really care about if they're looking at buying a Chinese motherboard but the what is it the instruction sets on intel side needed for having a vr rig or having something that can actually play vr is fourth gen intel or above so that means x99 or forward so if you do plan on doing like any vr stuff you can't do it on x58 as far as i'm aware i could be wrong but i i genuinely don't know um, thank you very much for listening to my talking head video and kind of me, me needing to get this video out there to kind of clear the air. Um, but at the end of the day, all the decisions that everybody else makes, that's their decision. I shouldn't be the one to, um, ultimately weigh one way or the other. But like I said, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.